Okay, um, several of you requested the actual removal of the of the uh, heater element. So this is a burnt out, as you can see the cap's even gone. Uh, this is a burnt out safety uh, heat, uh, heat high limit. Okay, and as you can see this has been uh, modified to bypass. Well, uh, I mean, it, they tried replacing. See, this is a clean lug and this is a dirty lug. And it's starting to rust. Now, I want to show you a close up. This is the this is a new style plug and it's pretty thin the metal if you look at it the metal's pretty thin the lug itself now here's the old style this is really heavy duty I mean the the, the, the insulation is thermally heated and, and it's a you can see inside it's a a lot heavier it's a lot heavier heavier duty and another thing with these lugs they should be really sturdy on the like I it's a hard removing this that's how it should be but you see the the lug itself is all rusty same with this one and it shouldn't be that easy to remove I should need a, a pliers to remove it that's how tight it should be but anyway these lugs are rusty okay this is the grounding strip Well, I use a it looks like a number one that's actually a number one yeah that's a number one number one Phillips okay so removing the grounding strip normally this should be under one of these lugs but they didn't want to disturb the tank lugs so remember to keep the screws yeah, I'm gonna take this pan keep the screws okay so remember these take a picture if you're not sure okay and I'm gonna go ahead and remove this because it's not doing anything right now but give you an idea of what it looks like well at least a busted one there's supposed to be a cap there's supposed to be a cap on this let me see there's supposed to be a cap on this see and it's totally missing so that's got to be replaced. This is the high limit. Okay. So here we got the two. Uh, it's a single element with two lugs. Okay. Uh, I'm using a number 10 wrench. Like I said, it's all, all the Chimbali, the Italian espresso machines are all metric. Okay. Now, I have already overhauled this tank about, oh, I think about 11 years ago. And it's just been sitting. I think we used it maybe three or four times in that time period. And then you saw me power it up uh, during the power testing. Okay, so really, I know this tank is clean, but let's just see. Let's just look, okay? Let's just see what we're dealing with. Okay. Now, for those who have a totally used machine, you really need to take this off because it will tell you the whole history of the machine. So we know this machine has been overhauled twice already. Uh, I did it twice already. Uh, it didn't really need the second overhaul, but I just did it just to kind of do a video. Uh, normally speaking, with used machines, a new machine can go as long as five years, and then it'll need an overhaul. Uh, I've seen machines as old as eight years, but definitely eight years is really pushing it. And there's no way to avoid it because it's just no matter how how many filters you use and stuff like that it's just a constant heating and reheating every single day especially with a machine that's been used in a restaurant I mean every day it cycles so that's a lot of calcium so even with a good filter it's still gonna get calcium calcium in other words is lime so as you can see this one's full because remember during the last video I had to fill this up whoa got a lot of water coming out okay now on a news machine that's an indication that it was stored with water so you expect okay so here's the here's the element okay and as you can see 
there's only a little bit of that's not even crust that's left over from the last overhaul there's a little bit here you can see a little bit here but that's that's nothing because like I said it was hard to use now there is a gasket here and as long as I don't damage it it's it did leak a little bit along these edges but that's okay you can put high temp gasket sealer now there is a little bit of calcium buildup but not much just very little okay so there's in a overhaul machine it should be like this there's nothing there's no sand or anything okay with a, a, a old machine I have in some videos you'll see it it's all full of crud especially the green stuff okay so no no pits no holes uh, so I know this element is good uh, it's probably a 1300 1300 watt okay so anyway you could take a wire brush to these lugs these lugs to get them get the rust out but they're just shiny enough for me to use okay so as you can see this is good I'm gonna put it back and double check the orientation because it's three three holes thank you somebody just threw the newspaper in the yard okay so we know we had the up and down of the test now if it doesn't go in square that means you got it in the wrong position okay so hand tight these don't lock them down on the first try because you'll misalign it, okay? So they should go hand tight. And if they don't, that means you're not lined up properly. Okay, normally on an old machine where you got to descale it, do not use acid. Do not use vinegar. Just take off all the parts. Take that. I have a video on this and you just reheat the tank and if you if you don't want to use a torch or you don't have a torch just let the empty out the tank as much as you can of all the loose stuff let it dry out just the drying out process will shake out most of the loose stuff okay and that's all you really need to do just get rid of all the loose stuff okay now you can't tap it on the side don't dent the tank you can't tap it like a light tap like that just lightly tap it and it'll knock anything loose and you can go in with uh, some kind of uh, uh, plastic or scraper or whatever and you can just get the loose stuff you can just poke in the screwdriver and just get the loose stuff you don't need to get anything that's stuck solid okay that's fine if it's stuck solid leave it there yeah, you're just getting rid of the loose trash. The reason why you're getting rid of the loose trash is because you don't want it to break off and float into your valves. Because they'll clog your valves. Okay. Now as you get closer and closer to the tank and it starts closing up, you want to just gradually go evenly around turn each one like two, two times and then go to the next one and same so on and so forth you don't want to tighten it down all, all at once on just one screw you crack you crack the thing so so Now, uh, on this particular machine, we fully tested it, so I know it works uh, in the last videos. Uh, I haven't done the dose checks yet, because I want to replace some of the stuff on here, and plus I got kind of busy. So anyway, so we're going to do Okay, so go all the way around, all the way around the circumference, you turn it like a quarter until it gets like one finger tight, just one finger, and you get it to about the same tightness, and then keep going around and making it a little tighter and a little tighter and a little tighter. This will take the stress off both of the joints, and 
it'll make it an even stress on the on the plate on the gasket itself okay so once we get it tight you don't really want to crank it all the way down just get it about one two finger tightness so not a full don't go don't go like 125 torque okay i would say stay around like 80 80 90 or or one finger tension the reason is is this thing's going to expand when it heats Get stressed out too much you'll end up stripping you'll end up stripping the bolts and then you get into a whole another problem so we're putting back the heater okay should be nice and tight okay okay this one bypasses this because this is it this is connected this is where the lugs would have gone to the uh, high high limit switch okay uh, then Put this back just to keep the screws i'm just going to put the screws back i have a high limit switch but for this video I, i'll make a separate video for that okay and then we'll screw in up these grounds because these things need to be grounded now in the u.s they require all all water and all metal objects to be grounded thoroughly so you find that in the American models, there's a lot of ground wires. There's these green and yellow ground wires. So that's how you can tell it's an American uh, a, uh, UL compliance. Okay, so I got that screwed in. I'm just going to lightly snug this one so we don't lose the screw. And there it is. Just opened up the heater, reinstalled the heat, uh, heating, heating lugs. Remember, they gotta be tight, can't be loose. These are snug, but I, I would want to replace them. So when I when I re, when I install the high limit, I'll replace the lugs. I'll clean the lugs up and and then tighten it up. Sometimes you can get away with squishing it a little bit. Like if you pull it off, you can get a little tweeze uh, pliers and squeeze it. Squeeze it. Oh, no, let me do that. You can't squeeze it a little bit. Don't go overhaul. Don't go whole hog. You can squeeze it a little bit. And then press it on that way. See now, see it's hard. It's hard to get on, but it's nice and tight. That's how it should be. Oh, that's how it should be. Where I got. Ugh. Okay, that's how it should be. It shouldn't be where I can pull it off with my fingers. So I'm just gonna squish this on a little bit. So I just squish with some pliers, just a little bit, not a whole lot. And then, and then, yeah, that's how it should be. Where it's really hard to get on. Okay. Okay. So nice and tight. No loosey goosey, and there you go. Inspection of the the heating element. Okay. Uh, just remember, you emptied out the water, so you can have. If you're manually filling, you gotta refill it again. Okay. So. Okay.